Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my show, Crypto by Jess. In today's video, we're going to talk about what's going on with the Ethereum ETFs that have been officially welcomed into the market. They're now officially tradable, as you may have seen on crypto Twitter or on the news or on YouTube. Um, although, thank you for stopping by to my channel if you're here. My name is Jessica, and it is my goal to make crypto as easy and friendly and understandable as possible. So you've ended up in the right channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about what's going on with the Ethereum ETF and why, honestly, it has not debuted in the most powerful way, as many were hoping. But I think many were also expecting it to have a quiet entry into the marketplace at the same time um, for lack of better words but anyway we're going to jump into it so we're going to start off with a very interesting and very concise video clip um, from cnbc where anthony pompliano who in many ways is a voice like a representative of the crypto space of the true crypto uh, investors um awesome awesome person so let's take a listen let us hop over spot ethereum etf set to begin trading today the uh, sec approved etf applications from 21 shares bitwise blackrock uh, fidelity iShares, uh Benek and uh franklin templeton as long as uh, along with uh, invesco galaxy and uh Joining us right now to talk about all of this and what it means for the crypto industry and uh, what is now uh, we'll describe as a, a milestone, another milestone. Anthony Pompliano is here, uh, founder and CEO of Professional Capital Management. Pomp, it's nice to see you. Good to see you. You think this is a game changer or not really? You seem less excited this morning than when you were here on Bitcoin Day. Yeah. Well, let's go look at the Bitcoin ETF. I think, you know, historic thing, uh, probably the best ETF launch in history. Um, one of the interesting stats is that the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF has had more net flows than QQQ year to date. Right, so just massive flows there, over $500 million just yesterday alone. And so I think what a lot of people say is, well, that was the first one. Is the second one going to be as big? And I don't think that's true, right? If you just go in, you know, before I came on, I looked at all the major news sites. People aren't talking about it as much. And so right. the media attention, the hype, all that stuff isn't really there. And so it brings you to the question of, like, why are people not talking about it as much? And I think part of the uh, challenge for Ethereum is that the story isn't as clear. It's very clear with Bitcoin, right? It's digital right. gold. We start talking about Ethereum, we start talking about a technology platform. There's a lot more competition, et cetera. But if you go and you talk to the people at Bitwise, you know, they're launching ETH uh, W today. Yep. Uh, what they would tell you is, well, actually, there's diversification. People on Wall Street love that. And so maybe actually the benefit that Ethereum will have is just people say, well, I don't want to have just one. I want to have a couple of them. It's Bitcoin. It's Ethereum. Let me do like a 70-30 split, and that'll be good enough for it. And so I think that we really got to see what these flows are going to look like because the story isn't as clear. They're, you're not going to get access to the staking. So the cash flow that people really like about Ethereum isn't available to these uh, kind of ETF holders. And I think that the flows itself are not going to be nearly as big as Bitcoin. And so the question is, how much impact right. on prices is this really gonna have? Walk us through just what the flows look like on, on Bitcoin to the extent that that's gonna be a model at all. Even if you said this 70-30 idea that you're gonna diversify yeah. in that, that way, you'd say, well then, should you just say that you know this is gonna be 30% of whatever that was? Yeah, well, I, I think that uh, the flows on the Bitcoin side, you know, some of these funds have 10, 15, 19 billion dollars in them, right? I mean, these are real, real money that's moving into these things. What I do think is interesting about the Ethereum ETF approval, and probably the thing I've taken away the most, is less about Ethereum and more about the rest of the market. What this signals to me is that all of the altcoins are going to come to Wall Street. It may take a while, there may need to be some regulatory clarity, they may get treated a certain way, but these things are going to come to Wall Street. And so what went... That is the main takeaway here is the actual win, the actual significance behind Ethereum's ETFs becoming tradable today and coming to Wall Street is exactly as we heard from Pump here. It's, it's truly just a milestone. It's representative of what is to come, right? In my previous video, I, 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 I entitled the video, you know, a guide to the future of Bitcoin. Well, in many ways, this is a guide as to the future of crypto altcoins the legitimate ones and the fact that they are eventually going to come to market right we know that trump has talked about uh denominating the treasury in bitcoin or bringing it into the federal reserve this is officially swirling around in the air it's in the air it's going to happen 
this was the first dot well bitcoins etfs was the first domino and now we have ethereum etfs right because exactly as we heard in this video while bitcoin is digital gold where it's just it's just like where you reserve your value right um ethereum is a technology level so now we're getting into useful technology right we're getting into an actual product um but super exciting what else is super exciting in the crypto world is that we finally have the bitcoin nashville conference here i believe it's on saturday we know that elon musk is confirmed to be there i think a few celebrities i, I believe john fk as well is going to be um is going to be there but uh very 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 exciting and this is where donald trump is supposed to be talking about bringing in bitcoin to as, as part of his monetary uh fiscal planning right and, and proposal and legislation so extremely exciting times um that said we also know that china today cut interest rates by 0.25 percent and as you can see on my screen here many are projecting that as i spoke about in like two videos ago where i believe nations the nations that are switched on and they know the power of bitcoin and they know what's going on hello why wouldn't they print their currency to go buy bitcoin right and so many believe we can expect as you can see on my screen that billions will be coming into bitcoin from this because if interest rates are cheaper then that means it's cheaper and more accessible and more encouraging for investors to to borrow right to borrow and to go position themselves into different financial um assets so very bullish but we have yet to see what is going to happen right we follow this on the daily um so things really do unfold day by day you know and sometimes we have a little insight as to the future but oftentimes it's day by day that said I, we're going to segue into what's going on in politics because we know that there was an, assassina an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Um, we know that really what ended up happening, you know, what it ended up backfiring, no pun intended, um, on, on whatever intention or agenda may have been behind this assassination attempt because while they tried to take him out really what it did is it glorified him right it glorified him we got to test and see his instincts uh in the line of fire you know we have that iconic photo of him like raising his fist in the air um but anyway what's very very interesting is that shortly after biden yesterday uh renounced his nomination to be the democratic uh candidate but he has not made an appearance since this announcement so it's been floating around in the air and i wanted to bring it to you because it's important for you to stay up to date with what's going on so you know what sort of events are shaping and affecting the political and financial climate that ultimately affects our investments that's why i bring you this news and so in this little video clip we have tucker who's an independent journalist he was fired from some big network um and he he goes over the events so i wanted to share this with you Let's so if you want to know is someone lying this is from charlie kirk i got a weird i'm reading this cold i got a weird lead on a story people ought to look into i got a call from a source close to las vegas metro police the official story was that biden's trip was cut short last week due to COVID. however according to this source u.s secret service informed las vegas metro that there was an emergency situation involving joe biden and to close necessary streets so that POTUS could be transported immediately to University Medical, which began to which they began to do in earnest. Then mysteriously, there was a stand down order and the Secret Service informed local Vegas PD that they were going to medevac POTUS to Johns Hopkins, which they presume meant fly him back east as soon as possible. Apparently, the rumor mill in the police department was that Joe Biden was dying or already dead, possibly. I didn't think too much about this lead. It seemed too wild to be true. But given that Joe Biden has been out of public sight for days and dropped out of the race via an ex post and his brother James indicated health was a factor, 
I'm beginning to grow more curious if COVID or something else has been more serious than reported. If anyone with Las Vegas Metro has information, please email freedom at charliekirk.com. I want to hear if there's more to the official story than what they're telling us. Well, I'm sure Las Vegas Metro would be just as just as open as forthcoming as they were during the uh, <laughs> during the October shooting. Yeah, the, the worst mass shooting in American which, history. Which is never spoken of again. They tried to drive me out of a camera position while I was doing a story on it. Yeah. Um, clearly, there's something. No, known for being open and forthcoming. Yeah. Um, like the city itself. Clearly, something is going on here. Obviously. I don't know what it is. I know it's hallmark, which is secrecy. Secrecy is the hallmark of lying. So if you want to know is someone lying, well, I don't know. Is he being is he hiding something? Well, then he's lying, right? So they're lying. I love this man's channel. It's I love his perspective, the things he says. Um, the fact is even you know running his own network now independently, and he asks the questions he does. Um, this is why I bring you this content, because it's so important to have independent voices um, that we can count on. You know, right now, everything is rigged. We're hearing it from somebody that has some agenda that is paid by some company that has some agenda. And so ultimately, what we hear, it's, you know, it's not pure information. And that's really, really, really a tragedy and a crime, I think, because people listen to their leaders and if their leaders are or, or those that are in positions of power right if we see somebody on tv much as maybe how you're seeing me now you believe you tend to believe what they say and so it's just such a crime i think it, it just is it's an absolute crime that our information is rigged what's even happening right now with um you know president joe biden um and, and the the assassination attempt on Trump, like it's it's really, really sad. It's really alarming. But what's what's really wonderful and kind of funny at the same time is that it's all being revealed. You know, they say like when the water goes down is that's when you can see who's now wearing swimming trunks. Well, that's what's going on right now. You know, we've been able to see through the debate that Joe Biden did where he, you know, against Trump where he completely fumbled on all his words, was losing his trend of thought. It was just an absolute shit show excuse, excuse my language it was just so revealing of the fact that it's not been joe biden in in the white house he's been a puppet you know so that was confirming the fact that donald trump was you know they attempted to assassinate him that was also revealing that there's some sort of agenda right um going on so everything is at least coming to light and that's what i'm personally grateful for but that said and, and see here you have it from Vivek, who was also running for president. Um, brilliant human being. And I'm so happy that he's also come to light, even though he didn't, you know, he's not ultimately nominated to be president. I'm so happy that he's become a voice in the world and in the U.S. and in politics um, and on political channels now. He's become a voice, you know, of reason and insight and awareness and knowledge. You know, he knows the way the system works. I was watching a video on him earlier. I didn't share it because there's just only so much I can share with you. But um, he pretty much called, he called it. He called the fact that he did not think Biden was going to ultimately be the Democratic uh, nominee candidate. So this is what he says right here, right? He says, we're not running against a candidate. We're running against a system, and it couldn't be truer. But that said, see, this is, see, I just wanted to show you this. It says, like, the bullet hit Trump, but it killed Joe Biden. This has been trending in Europe, I guess. And it says at the bottom here, the single gunshot that changed the trajectory of the world. But there was a video clip I wanted to play for you. Um where joe biden basically gives it away as to how he was going to go man i lost it anyway i can't find the video clip but it's a significant video clip where joe biden months and months ago um basically says exactly how he would resign if he were to resign and the way he would do this would be by getting sick somehow and then 
you know, pretending he died. Like he literally says this verbatim. I will find the video clip and I will show it in my next video. I cannot find it right now, unfortunately. But that said, we know now that he has stepped down as the Democratic nominee that Kamala Harris has taken the the candidacy. And what's a little creepy is in that today's video, um, sorry, in her, you know, accepting the, the nomination, this was yesterday, I guess Joe Biden chimes in to her public announcement. You may have already seen this, but if you haven't, it's the weirdest thing. And as I said a moment ago, you know, no one has seen him in days, in days. So very, very creepy and weird that he would just call in. I don't think this has ever been done historically, but like, and then she almost, almost gives it away. As you can see on my screen here at one point, like pay attention. She goes, Joe. I know you're still on the record, like as if she's going to say recording, but then she says call and then look at her nervous laugh. Like before I play it, just look at her nervous laugh. Like I like to pride myself in being a nonverbal uh, connoisseur of sorts, but it doesn't take, you know, a CIA agent to realize that like her laugh and everything is so, so fake. <laughs> It is so good to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call. See, on the right. We've been talking every day. Um, Did you, you probably, catch that? You guys heard it from Doug every day. Um, oh, you're still on the on the call. See, the right. We've been talking every on the day. Call. Um, you probably, you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us. And we do, everybody here does. Look at that face. <laughs> is look at that face. You are still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. I'm watching you, kid. I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love you, Joe. Oh, it is so. It is the creepiest thing. I'm so sorry. I really don't want to be bashing anyone's political stance, but I'm definitely like. <laughs> It's really quite clear to see there is all sorts of like fake nervousness and her fumbling on her words in this video. And um, yeah, so anyway, this is what's been going on. And we know that Bitcoin, you know, at, at Donald Trump's assassination attempt, Bitcoin dumped. But then as soon as Kamala was, um, you know, as, as soon as he was, you know, it was announced that he was okay. Bitcoin recovered, you know, um, why? Because Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market as a whole doesn't like uncertainty, right? That's what we're starting to see more and more, um, with just the way the markets react to news it doesn't like uncertainty. So that's something that you can take note of and just realize, like if there's any sort of uncertainty with whether that's with like tax cut, um, you know, tax cuts or that's you know some something is up in the air like the, the suspense kind of kills the crypto market for some reason but anyway um going back to what i was saying you know and then now with biden you, you've probably noticed in the past few days with biden's you know with biden's like a disappearance almost basically you know he, he caught covid he got sick and he's been just vanished for the last uh, couple days, um, that also affected Bitcoin's price. And then now that you know Kamala's been nominated, it's recovered. So it's really interesting to notice this, um, and really good to take note of the fact that the market does not like uncertainty. That said, uh, there was this clip I was just going to play for you briefly on Kamala. I know it sounds like a hate campaign at this point. It's really not, but she says it out of her own mouth that. Like she talks about population control, which many believe, you know, including myself was behind, the, you know, COVID, like the COVID and the vaccine. Um, but look, she says it out of her own mouth. It's crazy. When we invest in clean energy and electric vehicles and reduce population and reduce population. Did you mm -hmm. hear that? Let's play it again. When we invest in clean energy and electric vehicles and reduce population, and reduce population, more of our children can breathe clean air and drink clean water. 
and reduce population. That is who is now the Democratic candidate, the nominee. We know that Obama did not endorse her. Some have yet to hear who he's going to endorse, and whoever he endorses, of course, is going to have a lot of support because it is coming from Obama. Some speculate it may be Michelle Obama, but we have yet to see. Anyway, the reason I bring all of this to you and the reason I share this with you is because this is going to, this, this does. I mean, we've clearly seen it in the charts. It affects Bitcoin's price, right? And so it's just, it's good to know what's happening. It's good to know who, like what's going on um, and to go participate in the elections. I guess that's where I'm going with this. <laughs> I'm trying to campaign to get you to go vote and not vote for this. Like we cannot have this in the White House. We can't, we just cannot. Anyway, guys, and then with this, we're just gonna close today's video, but I loved this so much. I wanna put it on a t-shirt. It says, there's a new variant called, you know, <laughs> a new variant called Bitcoin is spreading around the world. I hope you catch it, right? Thank you. I hope everyone here catches some Bitcoin. Please go get some Bitcoin if you have not got some Bitcoin already. It's not too late. Times are changing. It's very, it's a very, very exciting time to be alive and to be here and to be, you know, knowing of Bitcoin and crypto. So if you're here, congratulations. I'm so happy you're here. Um, I'm going to bring a lot more content to you. I am still just ramping up, but the time is now. Between now and the end, end, the, end of the year is when crypto is really going to start pumping. Um, I believe it could be well, it could very well start happening in the next two weeks to one month, just because the Mount Gox um, airdrops are gonna be, you know, dying down. Um, we know that rate cuts are yet to be announced. Most likely they're gonna be announced in August. And with that will come, you know, the ease of being able to borrow loans and do business and that should theoretically pump the markets although if you've seen my last video you would know that the market also does react to rate cuts and ultimately it's not the best thing for the market so there's pro and cons um, for rate cuts but nevertheless i think that because bitcoin etfs are now in the market ai is such a huge narrative in crypto as well real world assets um, now the Ethereum ETF um, is also tradable. I think there's so much movement happening in the crypto space and, and real change and innovation that I think that it, you know, these rate cuts will be a positive thing in the crypto space, but we have yet to see. Uh, nevertheless, just based off of hi historical patterns, we should be and like this is the final like we are going into the the parabolic phase of this third cycle um in the bull run so i hope you're ready i love you very much and i wish you guys a wonderful night and i will see you guys here tomorrow ciao